Well, there are many questions, and we are expecting to get the Inspector General's report uh, any day now, and that could have many of the answers that uh, some of these lawmakers are looking for. Meantime, the president uh, first tweeting about Andrew McCabe, the number two man uh, fired before his retirement. Andrew McCabe fired. A great day for the hardworking men and women of the FBI. A great day for democracy. Sanctimonious James Comey was his boss and made McCabe look like a choir boy. He knew all the lies and corruption going on at the highest level of the FBI. Meantime, on the Mueller probe, the president uh, tweeting over the weekend, the Mueller probe should never have been started in that there was no collusion and there was no crime. It was based on fraudulent activities and a fake dossier paid for by crooked Hillary and the DNC and improperly used in FISA court for surveillance of my campaign, witch hunt. Why does the Mueller team have 13 hardened Democrats, some big crooked Hillary supporters, and zero Republicans? Another Dem recently added, does anyone think this is fair? And yet there is no collusion. So it was a busy weekend on Twitter and elsewhere. Let's bring in our panel. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com. Mar Lyson, national political correspondent of National Public Radio. And Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist. Molly, um, a fallout from McCabe and then the comments about the Mueller probe. Well, I mean, it is never a good thing when your number two at the FBI is fired for bad behavior. I mean, what he has suggested is that this is related to him leaking and lacking candor about it. It actually might be much bigger than that, and there would be reason to think it is much bigger than that. He has had a series of problems related to leaking and manipulation of processes and investigations. Uh, so it was a huge hit for this larger narrative. I mean, what we were told a year ago was that our intelligence chiefs and the, the highest people at our intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies were apolitical, nonpartisan Boy Scouts who had a very legitimate reason to be worried about Donald Trump. And a year later, we've had all these firings, removals, reassignments, and you have, you know, on Twitter, you can see people tweeting kind of in a crazy fashion against this president. That narrative looks patently absurd now. It looks like a much different story than we were told a year ago. Mark. Well, I think what's really interesting is the president's reaction to this. Uh, there, we're going to find out the reasons why McCabe was fired when, as you said, the IG report came out. But he was doing a kind of victory dance in the end zone. Then he started attacking Mueller f for the first time by name. And then one of his personal lawyers issued a statement saying the Mueller investigation should end. That has never happened before. Up until now, the White House has said they were cooperating. So then became an uproar as the president getting ready to fire Mueller. I don't think so. I think what's happening is he is intent on discrediting the Mueller investigation so that whatever Mueller comes up with, he can dismiss it. As you're speaking about John Dowd, who, yeah. who said what he said, Trey Gowdy, a congressman, was asked about that this weekend. I think uh, the president's attorney, uh, frankly, does him a disservice. Um, when he says that and when he frames the investigation that way. Chris, if you look at the jurisdiction for Robert Mueller, first and foremost, what did Russia do to this country in 2016? That is supremely important, and it has nothing to do with collusion. So to suggest that Mueller should shut down and that all he is looking at is collusion, if you have an innocent client, Mr. Dowd, act like it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair point for Gatti to make. What's strange is this conflation that we're seeing of Mueller and then the McCabe firing. These are, in my view, separate issues, although the president is connecting them, and a lot of his fiercest critics, ironically, are also connecting them. But when you look at the McCabe firing, I think you can make a very strong case, based on the facts, that he would have been fired regardless of who was president. Um, and, you know, regardless of the whole Mueller investigation, even if, if it didn't exist at all, because the malfeasance that is alleged, apparently, against Mr. McCabe occurred in the 2016 election. And that investigation, the IG probe, was launched before Donald Trump became president, and it was a, an Obama-appointed inspector general who came to the conclusions about what McCabe did. And last but not least, the person who made the decision, or the office that made the decision to recommend firing him, was this ethics office at the FBI that was completely nonpartisan, and the woman who runs it was appointed by Bob Mueller. On the merits, it looks like this was uh, misconduct that McCabe is responsible for, 
back in 2016. It should have nothing to do with Mueller. Yeah. But there Go is ahead, also, Mike. I think what Gowdy said was also kind of weird. I mean, it is possible for federal investigations to go off the rails, and it has happened before. You can talk to uh, Richard Jewell's family about that. He was the guy targeted by the FBI. They leaked his name and basically ruined his life before finding out that he wasn't responsible for the bombing in Atlanta. Robert Mueller and James Comey themselves were involved in the worst botching of an FBI investigation ever, which was going after the innocent man, Stephen Hatfill, in the anthrax killings, and they oversaw that and were quite confident about it. And Ted Stevens, the senator from Alaska, who had his conviction vacated due to gross uh, conduct by the FBI. I think Mueller was also head of the FBI at that time. So sometimes investigations can go off the rails, and it's incumbent upon an attorney to actually say that and to defend his client if an investigation has Except been corrupted. Except the president has involved himself in a way that no other president has urging the Department of Justice to make sure that, Comey, that that McCabe was fired before he qualified for a pension, which happened about 26 hours before he would have qualified, and then uh, connecting the McCabe firing with the Russia investigation. McCabe would be potentially a witness in an obstruction of justice case. But it's also talked... true that the president has complied with the Mueller probe for over yes, a year. And, and if you know that there's no, hasn't, but if you know there's no collusion, that connection? But if you know there's no collusion and you've been working with them for over a year and it's still going on and this narrative is still being pushed to undermine the legitimacy of a president, I can imagine someone getting pretty frustrated. You know, that. let me just, there's all this uproar about the president speaking out about Mueller for the first time and, and speaking about, out about the investigation. There was another president who did that. Oh, and Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, New York Times, February yep. 9, 1998. The White House broadened its attack today on Ken Starr, independent counsel investigating accusations involving President Clinton and a former intern, calling Mr. Starr corrupt and demanding an independent investigation of suspected leaks to his office. Paul Begala, senior White House political advisor, accused Mr. Starr of using the sweeping powers and unlimited budget of his office to conduct a politically motivated witch hunt of the president and to intimidate witnesses into testifying against Mr. Clinton. I remember that very well. And don't forget the vast right-wing conspiracy. Now, this is a tried and true playbook. You know, you're being investigated, you want to discredit the investigator. I think it's really similar to Clinton with one difference, which is Bill Clinton didn't go after the FBI. And the president has gone after the FBI in his tweets this weekend. He talked about corruption and lying at State Department, Department of Justice, and the FBI. He really has gone after institutions here in I a would, way that's I different. would say the big difference is the media treatment. Because in March, a month after that uh, New York Times headline that you just read, the New York Times headline was, White House's all-out attack on Star is paying off. So the media was much more well, friendly to the, Bill off, Clinton, yeah. the, to the Bill Clinton approach than they are this one. Last word, quickly. The other point I would make is people are saying, well, there was pressure from the president to fire McKay before he got his retirement benefits or his pension. I think that's a fair thing to point out. But if it is determined by the nonpartisan IG and the Office of Professional Responsibility that this man leaked in an unauthorized way to the media and then lied about it, should that person get a taxpayer-funded pension? That is a completely reasonable question to ask.